Hello, my name is Jason Miller with Alex Now Solutions, where we try to unlock the power of ServiceNow. Before we get started with today's segment, I would just like to thank everyone. I have currently 93 subscribers and a little bit under 2,600 uh, uh, views. And um, I'm always looking for more subscribers, so if you can uh, tell your colleagues at work to subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Once I get to the 100 subscribers mark, I'll be able to adjust this URL right here to something decent. Um, I'd like to take a second to just go over the analytics of this channel and show the global reach of it. So, so far since this short time span since October, we've generated about uh, nearly 9,000 minutes. And uh, like I said, 200, uh, 200 uh, excuse me, 2,600 views are a little bit under there. And um, we have viewers from all over the place. So I'd like to thank all the viewers, not only here in the United States, but uh, especially from India, UK, Australia, France, Czech Republic, Hong Kong, Brazil, Germany, Singapore, Malaysia, and the list goes on. So thank you so much. Um, I'm really flattered and humbled. Um, so let's move on to today's topic, which is the service desk call application. So on the platform now in Kingston, uh, looks like they have uh, something called the service desk call. And I guess what this is attempting to do is uh, kind of mitigate the risk or maybe even the problem of when you're working the service desk, you obviously have a bunch of different um, types of calls coming in, anywhere from incident, problem, change. And not all service desks are equal in scale. So sometimes you have smaller service desks having to log, um, you know, different types of um, uh, issues or records. So some could be uh, incidents, some might be change, and not everyone has a very robust ACD. So I guess um, this kind of helps out with that and also um, eliminates the need to have multiple uh, sessions open or windows open at the same time. So uh, we'll start off here. I just wanted to show you uh, right here in the uh, product documentation. Um, a little bit about it, how to activate it. So it's a plugin, and we'll get to that in a second, and I'll show you how to activate the, uh, the plugin. Um, next, we go over to, um, let's see here, before we begin, this is how you attempt to do the plugin. And again, I want to show you that, so how to um, actually uh, activate it. Um, and then it goes into um, domain separated systems. So basically what this is saying is that like if you have multiple domains, that it's going to use the domain of the caller um, after this record is created. So the record gets created or it comes, the call comes in, uh, the, the, I guess the service desk analyst will go ahead and take the issue. And whether it's an incident problem or change, um, when they hit submit, which I'll show you in a second, it'll create that record also and copy over some of the, the pertinent information. So it'll use the domain of the caller, um, otherwise um, it'll use the, the default domain. Uh, next we go into the tables, so it's new underscore call, and if you want to go to the list, you would just type in new underscore call dot list in the, uh, uh, the upper left hand uh, search box, and I'll show you that in a second. And then um, right here we have a client script that says, okay, um, when a caller comes in, if they have a value um, in the company field, we want to populate that automatically. And then we have a couple of business rules here, but one I wanted to focus in on was that it actually calculates the time spent uh, between opening the form and saving it. So this kind of makes me think that uh, ServiceNow is taking this step maybe to having the platform be an ACD in the future. So because so one of the few things it's missing is um, you know things like transfer rate or the amount of time the person was on hold. So I'm kind of curious to see if, um, if that comes about in the future. So I'm going to go to my instance, which is Kingston. Uh, it's Kingston version. And here we have the plugins. So what I'm going to do is type in, let's see here, service desk call, I believe, was the name of the plugin. And we'll see if this responds. There we go. We have our service desk call plugin. And I've already um, activated it. So I think there's an option here to, yeah. So you'd click on activate upgrade. We can go through the motions real quick. I'll click on it and I'll show you what it what it brings up here. And I won't go through the upgrade since I just did it um, last night, but um, I'll just leave that there for you so that way in case you want to um, register that or you know take a screenshot or whatever. But basically this is where instead of upgrade it would have activate if it was your first time. Um, also, um, since we're on the topic of plugins, uh, make sure you consult 
um, with your development staff before you turn this on because sometimes it has some unintended consequences. Um, and that goes for any plugin. So uh, next, we're going to move over to the call list here. And uh, I believe they said it was new underscore call dot list. And you'll see here calls list loading. Great. So let's, let's say we want to do a new one and we're a service desk analyst. And you can see here I, I did a couple yesterday and um, I think maybe a couple today. So I'll click on new. And we'll just take one of these callers here. I think maybe we have a president we could put in. Let's see here, Abraham Lincoln. Eh, let's put him in. I'm not sure if he has a company associated with him. Um, if he did, then uh, the company would populate. But let's um, maybe we'll just scratch that and we'll get one that does. So I think uh, Fred Kunda right here. He's with Acme France. And Acme France will go ahead and fill in there. Then we select our call type. This is critical. So we're going to put in, now if we want to do requests, well, first I'll do the incident. Put in the incident. Um, let's see here. Using having issues with, um, I don't know, performance, desktop performance. All right, so now we can go ahead and hit save. And I wanted to show you a couple things that you can do. Now you'll see um, this comes up here with this call transfer to the incident. I'm going to open up that incident in a second window so we can take a look at it. But also one thing I wanted to point out here was a task by the same caller. So we can see here, uh, there's already a couple of REQs opened, um, and then it shows us here the current incident. And then also by the same company, um, it'll show everyone in that uh, company that has uh, open incidents too. So I think this is kind of a neat feature. Um, one other thing that uh, is great about this is that if we go to the hamburger menu, we'll notice that you have the insert and stay. So basically, if you wanted to create a second record with the, I don't know, the same user, or maybe another call, comes flooding in because as we know like in the incident management world especially when something goes down you're gonna have you know uh, hundreds of calls maybe from the same uh, organization or company regarding the same issue so you could literally keep this short description um, the same and then it would just populate over so let's go ahead and take a look at that incident real quick and what do we see here a short description it filled in nicely uh, here we have our caller um, and then, yeah, it looks like um, it, it opened up everything um, as expected. So it, it copied over a couple things. Uh, I'm sure that if you wanted to or in the future, ServiceNow is probably going to um, plan to copy over more things. Um, I did a, um, a segment yesterday on the copy incident function, so you might want to look at that video. Um, one thing I did notice, though, is that if I did put in like an update here, and I hit save, and let's see if this does this again, but it wasn't saving on the actual incident record um, if I update this. So yeah, as we see down here, um, it doesn't update this. If I do a refresh here, if I reload the form, <clears throat> we'll see the short description doesn't update also. So that's one thing you're gonna have to um, keep in the back of your head uh, if you're training your people or your person that, that opens these records up is that uh, once this uh, process is done, and then you're going to want to move on um, over to the incident record and then update it from there. So I hope that makes sense. So uh, let's do a new one here. I'm just going to click on update. Hopefully this will take us back to the list. All right, it does. Let's do another one. Let's do one for uh, Fred Luddy. And now we're going to do a request. And I want you to watch what happens to this short description here. Well, it turns into a request item. So now I'm going to open this up, I'll order an Apple iPad 3. Now when we hit submit, watch what happens. It takes us here. So now it's taking us to the request form, and we have to click order now. Now one thing I noticed, and of course, you know, as you can tell, I probably play uh, devil's advocate a little bit too much, but I always go with, you know, like what happens if I open up the request? So let's say I open up the request but I don't go through with, with um, actually selecting that iPad. So let's do this again, new call.list, or let's see if we can do new call.do, that way we can skip a step. Great, we got a new one here. Um, let's say Fred calls up, and then he changes this request. Um, let's do the iPad 3, let's hit submit. Well, let's say we get to this uh, spot and we don't wanna do it, so then we just kinda 
move back here and uh, if we look at the test by the same caller, let's see if it went through. Um, REQ 1016 or call 1016. So I don't see an REQ for it, so that's good. I'm just making sure there, but the call does exist. So that's one thing I wanted to, to point out is that um, you know there, at this point I think you'd have to create a new one I guess um, in order to make it go through. So um, definitely going to want to watch if um, you know if people are going to make a request for some hardware or something whether they're actually going to order it um, then and there um, before you know you enter in. Um, we'll get to that submit screen I guess, and I guess you could put it in the description of um, you know user um, merely called for information on the uh, iPad 3 and just save that. Okay, so here was our incident that we opened. Um, and then, let's see here, here's our call screen which I showed before. And then, uh, well, yeah, we're just back at our screen. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you today. Um, I had a couple of tabs here laid out. Uh, I wanted to do it in a very condensed format because again here at Alex Now Solutions that's what we do we present you things in video and uh, we don't want to waste your time because time is precious correct um, my name is Jason Miller um, if you want to send me an invite on LinkedIn I'll be more than happy to connect with you again I'm the founder of Alex Now Solutions where we attempt to unlock the power of service now thank you and have a great day